I don't hear you. Can you hear me? You are live. I I can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, let me put this on. All right. Hey, I know you're probably all watching the returns of the uh, Atlanta of the Georgia election, and I want to do that too. But all right, hey, we'll be on for a few minutes. I know you're probably all watching the returns of the uh, Atlanta. See, hi, Velma, Taravia, Tamara, Olivia. Salika, Yolanda, Barbara. Everybody's got an awe at the end of their names. Hi, Barbara. Albert, Grace Jones. The Grace Jones, weren't you here last week? Hi, Grace. God, anything God is doing. Hi, Mark. Beverly Hunter. Dana. Pin Pratt. Hello, Pin. Uh, our Instagram folks coming on. There your names are. Hello, Brownlee. Sintrup, Roshanda, Frazier, hello. Come on on, folks. Come on, come on, come on. As I said earlier, I know we don't want to be on long because most of us are, are watching the Georgia returns, the Senate election, and there's so much in the news uh, today. I'm not going to get into all that tonight, but I could talk about it a lot. Things are tightening up. And while you're coming on, let me just say that I'm in some into some aspects of astrology and uh, which remember the wise men from the East were astrologers and studied the stars looking for the place where the king of the Jews might be born. That's according to scripture. So they were um, and I plan to go to the East maybe over the holidays. But these wise men saw something. There's something in studying the stars, the they call it zodiac from the Greek word zao, which means life, or zoe, zoo, allergy. They saw the animations in the sky, or the animals in the sky, and that's where we get this whole idea. Hello, Nicole Pearson. Girl, you got the right name, last name at least. Uh, but according to what I've studied and some of the research I've done, the, the planetary alignments right now are almost identical to where they were in 1776 when this country was founded. Now, mind you, there's a lot of occultism in the founding of this country. Uh, the Masonic orders and the way the layout of Washington, D.C., the 13 colonies, the 13 stripes, 13 steps on the American dollar. Uh, nobody's done a lot of research into that, and I'm not suggesting anything necessarily evil, but just ritualistic, mystical. The word occult doesn't always mean evil. It just means mystery. Cult is a different, is a root word for cultivation our culture so we are cult christians are cult followers of jesus i've been that all my life four generations uh, jews are cult followers of moses or abraham uh, mohammedans are cult followers of muhammad islamic people uh all leaders it could be a joyce meyer a joel osteen or jakes have cult followers i know i do many of you watching do it's not all bad. It's just cultivated followers, and I'm trying to cultivate you now. So anyway, in the alignments of the planets, uh, the tension that you're seeing, the uh, the uh, whether it's protestation, a lot of protesting is going to continue. People want the truth. They want their rights, and they want what's right. You see that in Iran. You see it in China. You see it in the Ukraine. You see it here in America. The... The, there's a difference in white or Christian whiteness and Christian witness, a vast difference. You're seeing more Christian whiteness than witness right now in this whole Trump debacle. And it's becoming ev more evident every day that this man is a thug. And uh, his followers, uh, he's, he's supported mostly, and history will remember that the church put this man in. You know, the guy that tried to destroy democracy uh, was sponsored mostly because a lot of the more progressive Republicans who don't want the ultra-conservative mentality are backing away from the party and from him. 
but his staunch hold on are evangelical Christians for the most part. Same kind of Christians were members of the Ku Klux Klan. You couldn't be a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Now, why do I bring this up? I want the Christians to wake up and realize that they cannot fully express or even experience Christ consciousness unless they stop their arrogance about supremacy or superiority. I had to go through that as a Christian and realize that just because I'm a Christian, that doesn't make me better. I used to say I was better off than other people. That was in my thinking, but not better than anybody else. I just thought I was better off because I was one of the few people that were going to go to heaven. And I believe that if there is heaven, that ultimately all people will go there if God is good. We could be wrong on God and mercy enduring forever because we can't prove or disprove God. We can prove and or disprove our beliefs, you know, our doctrines because they're man-made. So our scriptures in general. So, you know, I have to allude to that kind of thing because, you know, you constantly have a bunch of people. Hello, Beverly from Cleveland. Kimberly, thank you for your life and for your teachings. And well, I'm saying that to you as well. I appreciate you all very much, Doreen, Teresa, Mark. Well, let me get into the thing tonight, the teaching tonight, because it's about um, um, it's about um, let me find it here. I've just been thinking about women and uh, the role they play in culture and in society. And and uh, where's my? I don't see it. Um. I had it up here, I'm sorry. It's gone. Um, my notes, I'm sorry. I just wrote all, all, wrote all this out. What is this? Um, I'll find it here in a second, I'm sorry. One second, y'all. It's in, in my box, because I sent it to me. <laughs> uh, all right, here it is. Here it is. You find it? Who, yeah, I found it. Who makes you feel like, you make me feel like a natural woman? You remember that song Aretha Franklin sang? Um, she's not the writer, but she's the singer, and she's the one who made it popular. So I wrote this out just thinking about who makes you feel? She sings. The lyrics are, you make me feel. But I'm asking you, if you are a female, who makes you feel like a natural woman? And what if you are a natural or nurtured man or male? Who makes you feel like that? What makes you feel natural? That when I say natural, the word means existing in or caused by nature, not made or caused by humankind. Nature is the phenomena of the physical world collectively, including plants and animals and landscape and other features and products of the earth, as opposed to humans or human creations. Natural things, plants, dirt, water, river, lakes, trees, wind, all, all features of nature. We're approaching the Christmas season when Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, are considering the virgin birth of a human God and or icon called Jesus Christ, whom scriptures say was supernaturally given and gifted to the humanity, the human race, as its savior and to Christians, its Lord. There's a difference. The whole world, I believe, if there is a such thing as salvation, brokered by God in Christ, finished work of the cross. If that is in fact a reality for anybody, it's a reality for everybody. That if Jesus was redeeming humankind and not just a few Jews or a few Southern Baptists or a few Protestants, Catholics, if he was really uh, redeeming, repurchasing humankind, then everybody is saved. They just don't know it. Scripture says God is the savior of all men. Paul writes that. And especially those who believe. I think that's 1 Timothy 4 and 9. He's a savior of all men or people, and especially or has a special relationship with believers. But I found out that a lot of so-called believers don't really believe in the salvation of the world. They believe in, in, in a possibility, but not a probability. They don't really believe. They think most of the people are going to go to hell. There are scriptures that actually support that position. The Bible can be a conundrum because it can be very self-contradictory. I've studied it now for almost 60 years, awareingly. I started studying long before I came to college in 1972. That's 52 years ago. I started studying it, reading it, as soon as I learned how to read and reading about it. My mother had books about the scriptures. My godmother was very studious. 
And so I studied and read not only the Bible, but anything that would help explain the Bible. And after 52 years of studying, I've come to the conclusion that a lot of the stuff that we've been taught is in error. It's inaccurate. It's imprecise. Some of it's outright deception. It's just not true. So I you bear that in mind in some of the things I'm saying. I'm a healthy, pretty happy, whole person after seven decades and not perfect by any stretch of anyone's imagination, certainly not mine, but I'm pretty solid and grounded in what I am and who I am. And I've had years and years to study through all this stuff. I'm getting calls from preachers every day that want this to, to discuss things. Some are retired, some are tired. All of them are almost tired. Uh, they're rethinking a lot of things. So now we're talking about the virgin birth and Mary, the Virgin Mary. And I've often said King James and King Jesus are not the same people. Both of their mothers were named Mary. One was the Virgin, the other was Mary, Queen of Scotch. Do the research. This is not the normal father and son scenario this season, but a mother and son scene or sanctity, rarely seen comparatively in scripture. You don't see a lot about the as much as the Catholic emphasizes the Virgin Mary or the mother of God uh, throughout the rest of the scriptures and most of other Protestant Christianity, very little references to the Virgin Mary in her relationship to Jesus. Or we would never call her mother of God. Hail Mary, mother of God. Pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Interesting lyrics devised by some sanctified thinker years and years ago, all these different prayers and repetitions of the Catholic church. Anyway, it's a good time to consider or perhaps reconsider the role, the rule, the rights of women, not only in history, but today in a modernized and more progressive culture. I'm fascinated with women, always have been, not just sensually or sexually, but historically and emotionally, I'm tied. The first woman that a man ever loves is his mother. Mine is here, 93 years old. My godmother, you hear me talk about her. She lived she was 90. Very special to me, very precious to me. Um, Mother Sherman, Mother Garner, Mother Barry, Mother Hale. I have a list of all the women in my church. I knew them by name and they knew me usually by name. So they, their fingerprints and faith prints and sometimes their footprints are on me. Uh, but I've had, uh, and I've adored them and loved them. My godmother's a preacher. I bet my mother's a preacher, my grandmother on my father's side was a powerful preacher. She could out preach my grandfather. Tune up, fast and pray. So women have had a huge role in my life. I'm the typical mama's boy. I don't apologize for that. And I'm not ashamed of being a mama's boy. I love my mom. I'll always be her boy. I'm 70 years old and I'll always be her boy. So the women have always outnumbered men in presence, but not always in power. Some think this is God's way, God's will, or God's preference. Do you? You think God outnumbers men with women in presence, but wants their power diluted or muted or diminished? There's a lot of anger out here and women are rising up in, in many ways that uh, men don't know what to do. The same resistance to change in the roles of, uh, of uh, people of color in this country and the January 6th thing and all the stuff that's in the news, that's people resisting a change that brings people who've been marginalized and sometimes criminalized by a group that wants to remain in control and they're losing control and they're freaking out. They're in public breakdown. That's what you see with all this. The number one threat to American security is domestic terrorism, mostly white, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, burning down gay bars or bars for the LGBTQ. They don't want LGBTQ folks anywhere else. So they have their own bars, their own churches, sometimes their own favorite restaurants. And you're going to burn the, that down? What do you want to do with these people? Act like they don't exist? I've got gay people in my family that I love dearly and would die for. I would kill for them. And they would do the same for me. And these people, most of whom have some religious orientation, it's warped as is their twisted thinking. They feel like they're doing God a favor. Killing Masses of people are hurting them when God created them. See, I didn't make myself black or African-American or of the complexion that I have. I was born this way, as you were. 
Those are important things. So American women have just achieved a significant milestone. I want to bring this out tonight because it's important. They hold more payroll jobs than men. Women hold more. That's a first. It's never been in the history of this nation of more women holding payroll jobs than men. Occupations that are shrinking tend to be male dominated, like manufacturing, while those that are growing remain female dominated, like healthcare and education. Isn't that interesting? That puts men in the, at a disadvantage in today's economy. But it also ensures that the female dominated jobs remain devalued and underpaid. Why the disparity in this 21st century? What are people thinking? It hasn't been that long since women have had women's a right to vote. And now we have a female vice president. The second most powerful female on the, in our country is Nancy Pelosi. That same conservative ultimate Christian Dominique who demonized her. She's one of the sweetest, kindest leaders we've ever had and one of the greatest speakers of the house in history. And she chooses as her successor, a young black man. It's just, uh, uh, she's amazing. And so these people don't like her. But she's so cool that some gay man attacked her husband in his home, an 82-year-old man with a hammer. And not one word that we hear of aggressively or passionately uh, denouncing him. The things that Donald Trump is doing with Kanye or Ye, Ye that's a biblical term, 16th century king, he's now he's Ye, and he's doing all this anti-Semitic stuff. And then he has the other gentleman, uh, I shouldn't say gentleman, the other man, I can't remember his name right now, I've been saying it all day, but he's a nationalist, white nationalist, a um, um, racist, white supremacist, Alex Jones, all these guys, and they're all over everywhere. I'm more bothered by that because it's, I see it as a threat to the culture. I don't say it's a personal threat, but it could be, might be. I'm a man of color. Anything could happen. But women are at this very high place and we need to pay attention to it because the feminine essence, the feminine courage, the feminine deity or divinity is about to be pronounced, announced, pronounced and amplified or magnified in ways we've never seen it. In the natural, in politics, is going to happen. There are more females in Congress than in the history of this country. Women of color in very powerful positions. Uh, we now have the first female vice president of the U.S., Kamala Harris, and are honoring the first female speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. Both women shattered the glass ceilings, as Hillary Clinton in some ways did as well, or got very close to it. Note these lyrics, though, by Carol King, who wrote this song, Natural Woman. Carol King, Jerry Goffin, Jerry um, Wexler. These are authors of the, soul, of the song. Before the day I met you, I can hear Aretha singing it now. <laughs> Life was so unkind. But you're the key to my peace of mind. How many women would say, before the day I met you, your man, or uh, your lover, could be a female, but before I, the met, I met you, life was so unkind. But you're the key to my peace of mind. Why? Because you make me feel, you make me feel, you make me feel like a natural woman. <laughs> that, that has been fully naturally accepted, those lyrics, and embraced by millions of men and women. And yet the words unapologetically suggest a kind of affirmation or sort of a female codependency on men or her man or male affirmation to make her feel natural or properly nurtured. Now, I don't want to ignore those lyrics and I don't think they're unfounded or inappropriate as regards to what um, uh, Carol, Carol King felt or, or uh, Aretha Franklin felt those are little, maybe you feel it about your man you could be a man and feel that about your man or you could be a manly woman and feel that about your wife I've always loved that song especially Aretha Franklin's 1967 version of it and yet in many modern circles today those lyrics don't and won't necessarily go over 
with the same popularity that they did when first introduced to, to the music industry. I just thought about those words. Again, that's one of millions of people's favorite songs. It might not be that pro popular today, not because, again, the lyrics are un unrelatable to many people, men and women, but for centuries and millennia, it's like women depending on a man to affirm her, validate her, uh, somehow uh, make her feel that she's a natural part of the culture or of the consciousness or of uh, the, the world. Mm. The judgment that the biblical God places on Eve for her role in causing and or encouraging Adam to eat from the forbidden tree is described thusly. Because I want to, a lot of this whole idea about mistreating women comes out of religious groups, particularly the Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Women have to sit in a different part of the building. What's happening in Iran right now with women cutting their hair and saying, I'm not going to wear these burqas, these robes. I'm not going to wear these head covers. I'm going to show my beautiful hair. And if I want to show my toes or my arms or my hips and legs, let me be beautiful. These women are beautiful. They just don't feel beautiful and they are penalized or penetrated because they're beautiful. They're put in a, they're pinned down and put in a penitentiary emotionally because they're female. That, that's not going to work much longer. It's coming to a screeching halt as we speak. And even the Iranian government has dismissed the moral police. And they're thinking we're going to have to, because they're, they're breakout re rebellion all across the country. They're killing mothers and daughters and sisters. And it's just, it's happening in this country and in other ways. People who have been deprived of rights for millennia are now demanding their rights and getting it. And the, the religious people of the world, fundamentalist religion, whether it's Islam, Judaism, or Christianity, are the only, are the most violent and violating adversaries to change. They want to hold things the way they've been. Religion is on the wrong side of history. Religion is bondage, institutionalized religion. I'm not talking about a relationship with divinity as you experience it and express it. We all have our expressions and experiences. But institutional organized religion with all the dogmas and doc, uh, doctrines and some of the disciplines are now being made held accountable or called into account of some of the destructive work they've done on the planet. You hear me? The judgment that the biblical God places on Eve for her role in causing and are encouraging Adam to eat from the forbidden tree is described thusly in scripture. I will make your pains in childbearing very sincere. That's in the book of Genesis. One, I will make your, uh, three, I will make your pains and childbearing very severe. In other words, prior to Eve's role in what is called the fall of man, and I'll talk more about that if I have time tonight, uh, God judges her and says, you're going to start having cramps and menstrual cycles and painful, miserable contractions because you're a woman and while being or functioning as a female, you're going to carry the weight for, for nine months. You're going to have your organs shift around so an embryo can grow in you. Now, this is already happening in animals. But this is like this, this particular nature is going to be a judgment. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. That's in the scripture. Genesis. Your desire, here's the one that is scariest to some women, your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. That's why for centuries and millennia, men ruling over women for at least 2 billion Christians and another 15, 14, 50 million Jews have allowed it, not to mention another billion Mus Muslim or Islamic people. They all believe in that passage. Where God is quoted to have said, and we can't prove that God said it or didn't say it. We're not even sure if Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Nobody knows who wrote the book of Genesis with absolute certainty. And we don't even have the original handwritten copy of Genesis or any of the Bible. We don't even know where it is. All we have are copies of copies of copies. 
And there's been decades and centuries of dispute and argument over to over how many of the, the, the passages are really literal. The books of the Bible are uh, not forgeries made up because by the time we got these books, their authors were dead, both Old and New Testament. Uh, by the, into the modern age. So from the beginning, or the Judeo-Christian Islamic religious presuppositions, women are cursed as both lower and less than their male counterparts. That's the general accepted position until now. There's always been women who oppose that, but not in mass and not very publicly. And they were shot down, sometimes killed. Some associate menstrual cramps, painful birthing contractions, and other pathos unique to the female species and specialness with Eve's bringing down or causing the so-called fall of man, both Adam and the human race. Eve is translated from Hava into English. Eve is short for evil or evening. That's the suggestion. That's the inference that the woman is evil, almost demonic. So it's okay to curse her, cut her, maybe even kill her. Men have abused their women in the world for millennia. And very few men talk about it, males. But I'm, I just felt led to talk about it because um, I, I'm very proud of what, I, what I'm seeing happen among females in the professional world, in the political world, religious world, spiritual. Some of those spiritual human beings I've ever been around in my entire life are praying women. They were not brightly educated. They were rarely brightly dressed. They wore real somber clothing and colors, modest, modesty, humbly, homely, if you will. A lot of the black women in the Pentecostal church never wore makeup, didn't, didn't cut their hair, didn't color their hair. Some of them didn't even comb their hair. <laughs> they didn't want to do anything to draw attention to unnatural beauty. Uh, but they were powerful and they were prophetic. Uh, though they were made to feel pathetic, they were powerful. And I want to apologize for the years and years. And I'm, I'm one of those, I've never mistreated women aware or aggressively or anything like that, but uh, summarily, probably, because that's what the culture did. Men in general, um, you know, women have, uh, the first woman that a man ever loves is usually his mother. We take our first meals from her umbilical cord while still embryos and later outside the womb our meals come from her breast even when our teeth begin to grow as babies male or female and the mother nurses the child and sometimes the nipples bleed or are swollen and a bruise the breasts are and they just keep doing it now way and they did this for centuries before there were bottles and pacifiers and uh, uh, formula women fed from their bed breasts Millions of women died in childbearing or shortly thereafter. Many experienced suicide tentals, uh, uh, temptations and, and tendencies uh, as postpartum. Uh, and some go through postpartum for a year or so and have to go into therapy just by doing and being the natural female. And they've had to experience all this horrible pain. We've been insensitive to that. I know I have, I have four sisters and they all had periods. And they all had cramps. Two of them had very severe cramps almost every time. Others were less, but daddy, more than mama, was especially sensitive to his daughters when they were in pain. He was using the cold towel to put on their brow if they were uh, sweating and perspiring and shaking. My older sister would just shake and quiver. I remember one time I said, she just doing that for, to get attention, daddy. She ain't that sick. And I almost got a whipping for that from him. He said, don't you ever let me hear you say or talk that way about your sister. She's a female. You don't know what she's going through. This means she's my daughter. This means she can get married and have more babies if she wants or bring me grandchildren. Whenever they're in pain, you better be there to help them. And I remember crying as I would go to the store to buy a package of uh, uh, um, Kotex. I was embarrassed. I was angry. And I said to one of my sisters, you have your period every month. Why don't you, why would you, why do you wait to the last minute? I was really thought, but I went two or three different times. I remember I'd wait and so nobody was in line before I'd buy it. And I'd complain if there was a man there, that these aren't for me. You know, I was just, you know, I was like 12 and 13 and stuff like that. So we've taken women for, 
for granted in so many ways. And I like to be apologetic about it. Men in general love women beginning with their mothers, again, whom we not only love, but initially we worship them. And yet we're ingrained almost from birth, often by our mothers with the attitude of sexual or gender superiority, the kind that has for centuries made it okay to mistreat women, especially ours or those considered owned by us. In the Jewish tradition, you literally owned your wife. In much of Christianity, that attitude is there. She's property, chattel or cattle, second rate, no rights. Even white women, not just black, but women across the planet. We've abused them. And there's a lot of anger among women. And some of them are acting it out. Our mothers raise us, but we start indirectly owning them and ruling them from the first time she feels obligated to feed and nurture us as her offspring. It's as usual and sometimes solely the mother, the woman or female who responds to the cries, the wailings and the rantings of her children. The passions are the same for both male and female children, of course, but with respect to the mother's father and her husband or the child's father, there's a sense of obligation on the mother's part, a subjugation, if you will, and sometimes humiliation of the mother or female's consciousness. Take care of that boy. So we learn early that if we make certain sounds and cries and protestations, we start manipulating our mothers from infancy. Females do that as well. But with the mother having a father, if she had one that she had relationship with, or an older brother, um, or is married to the child's father, she has this male influence all around her. Take care of your daddy. Take care of your daddy. He has, we have this special seat. My dad had one. He sits at the head of the table. Scripture says he's the head of the wife. The word husband comes from a Greek, uh, two English words, house bond or house band. We really expect the mother to band and bond the house together. The dad's gone a good bit of the time. But really, the wife, and we've stopped saying, now I pronounce you man and wife together. We have to say husband and wife. Like we keep our manhood. She's no longer just a woman. She's a wife. So in, in doing marriage ceremonies, now we say we now pronounce you husband and wife together instead of just man and wife. The man's the man, you know. But these are just subtle colloquialisms and iconoclasms that have been within the culture of the Western world and really of the world at large for all this time. And we need to speak out and apologize and change the way we look at things because that same spirit that mistreats women mistreats ethnics, gays, sometimes physically challenged people, uh, mongoloids, or sometimes, um, uh, what's the, uh, the people that don't have color in their skin. Somebody texted him, I forgot that quick. Um, I'm not, it's not Alzheimer's, it's just part timers. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me tonight. Let's talk about, uh, uh, the challenging rules, rights, and realities of the divine feminine presence and the power in these modern and evolving times in the history of our species and how we are being universally upgraded, starting with attitude toward ourselves and others. Let me go a little further. With the Abrahamic phase of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, women, though dearly loved, are considered property of their men, beginning with their fathers and brothers and later husbands or lovers. I just alluded to that in the things I just said. Misogyny is defined or at least can be described as hatred or contempt for or prejudice against women. We've had one of the most misogynist presidents in recent history uh, in Donald Trump. He's openly misogynist, very and completely unapologetic about it. And as a group of followers, many of whom are women that embrace that misogyny. There is an innate and the men don't always realize it. A subconscious hatred, prejudice, contempt. And we mistreat women because the Bible gives us permission to when God says, because you did this, Eve, you're evil. You're the evening of the human race. You're the darkness. Now, we don't use that actual terminology, but the English translation of Chava to Eve is based on that interpretation of the worth or lack of worth of women. It's a form of sexism, misogyny, that's used to keep women at a lower social status than men, thus maintaining the societal roles of patriarchy. 
same spirit among slavery, keeping the slaves down or the ethnics down or the people of color, people who are not Anglo-Saxon Protestant, Anglo-Saxon, we call them WASP, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Patriarchy is a social and religious system in which positions of dominance and privilege are primarily held by men. This has been the American political, social, and religious tradition from its beginning, both before and since the Revolutionary War and the official founding of the United States. Women, like people of color or non-white people, were and are expected to stay in their place. There are men today that cannot stand that a woman might have a construction job or be in combat. I have struggled with that as well. Or that a woman, and there are actually more women in seminary than there are men. There are more women in medical school than there are men. Uh, women are moving into politics, corporate executives, presidents of companies, owners of companies, running their own households. And now older women, they call them silver foxes um, are finding younger men <laughs> and that they take care of them. Sugar mamas take care of these dudes. The guy stays in the house, takes her out, sleeps with her, goes on trips with her. She can afford it. And he's enjoying her. She's enjoying him. Men have done it for years, but women are looked down on if they find a young man and get intimate with him. I think Madonna started changing that. And there's a lot of women that go through a lot of men, like men have gone through a lot of women. But uh, there's this new energy, this new interest, this new curiosity. Some people would say this new sin consciousness. I don't call it that. Where these women are just, and a lot of them are lesbians. Some of them prefer, they're erotically attracted to another female. And they're a grandmother. I met several grandmothers uh, who were married more than once and have grandchildren who now feel more comfortable with a woman being her partner or wife. Some people are uncomfortable with a, a man saying, this is my husband or a woman saying, this is my wife. We felt a little bit more comfortable when they said, this is my partner. <laughs> but now they've gone and said, no, this is my wife. My name is Sister Jones. Her name is Sister Jane. My name is Brother Joe and his name is Brother John. And that's my husband or, you know, it's not quite as shocking to the new generation because they are growing up seeing commercials about it and, some of their favorite artists are bisexual. Some of their favorite celebrities have three children with a spouse to whom they are not married. And then they come on television and stand there with three kids and the woman is pregnant and say, oh, by the way, we're thinking about getting married. And everybody goes, oh, congratulations. For what? Uh, there's a sense of entitlement that comes along with marriage. I believe in marriage. I was married for almost 30 years and uh, still feel a connection to my wife even though we're divorced. Uh, she filed, by the way, not me. And I would never have because I can put up with whatever she thinks she can't put up with. I, marriage is never uh, perfect. Sometimes it's not even pleasant. Um, it's becoming increasingly less popular. A lot of kids grew up in homes where their parents didn't get along and they love relationship, but they don't want to marry. And a lot of people are more in love with love and the fantasy of love than they are the person they say they love. We like the... It used to be the, 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 the little white house with the picket fence. Now they want mansions and estates, big, expensive condos. <laughs> uh, and that's okay. But uh, we just, I want to draw attention to, we shouldn't be talking about these things in the 21st century, but the attitude of many religious people in particular against women or toward women is as bad as it was 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago. Misogyny has been widely practiced for thousands of years. It's reflected in art, literature, human societal structure, historical events, mythology, philosophy, and religion worldwide. It's just been okay to demean or marginalize females. An example of misogyny is violence against women, which includes domestic violence. And in its most extreme forms, uh, forms uh, misogynistic terrorism, or it's also called Femicide, which is a hate crime, which is broadly defined as the intentional killing of women or girls because they are female. It's without question a form of hideous mental illness, but it's growing. Men go out and they might rent a prostitute and then kill her or torture her. And then go to the next prostitute. 
I know of prostitutes, not personally, but I know of it indirectly, who pray every night before they hit the streets that God would protect them from men who are violent or who hate women or protect them from getting STDs or even HIV. Now that to me seemed very absurd and irridiculous and ludicrous back in the days I first heard about it. But now I understand, I'm not justifying it, but some of these women, that's how they feed their kids. And they got more than one, more than two. They go out and pray. What has the world come to is the thing I would have said and many people still do say, but there are men that look for women like that. They're, they're gay oriented people, mostly men, who look for gays and try to kill their gayness by killing a gay person or torturing or tormenting a gay person when they have inclinations toward male eroticism or same-sex eroticism themselves. But they feel horrible about it, so they kill uh, and torture these people instead of facing who they are. And a lot of the people who feel badly about who they are or aren't are based on religious presuppositions. Religion has been and caused a lot of violence and violation of the human species, crimes against humanity. That's why I've shifted from institutional religious mentalities to a more free, expanded spirit. Y'all call it sin. Some of you religious folks, you just as bound as you can be, just as angry as you can be, just as arrogant and obnoxious and condescending. You're on here fussing and talking about the Bible say this. The Bible is not the only base of life. People lived, including God, way before and will live way beyond and is powerful besides the Bible. There is God before, God besides, and God beyond scriptures. You've made an idol of the word. The word say that. The word. Most of you have not read the word or studied it with the stents for decades that I have. After all these years of studying, I've come to the conclusion that we may have missed it and the way we celebrate and salute and idolize scripture. It's become a graven image. The Bible itself says thou shalt have no graven or engraved images. And that usually means a statue or something physically made. But the scriptures are not necessarily, even though they seem to say the inspired word of God, but the inspired word of men about their limited perception of God. Jewish men at that. It was the Hebrew mentality. And I'm a Hebrew Christian or Christian Hebrew because Christianity was born out of the Hebrew is uh, by the Hebrew thought and scriptures. So yes, I'm working through and sorting through and navigating and negotiating through all of these new ideas and different ways of thinking and rethinking and repenting and uh, repairing and sometimes replacing old icons. That's important that we all do. Misogyny is also uh, often operates through sexual harassment. It's all over the country. Particular powerful entertainers, celebrities, athletes, or politicians, and preachers take advantage and harass females. Usually, it's men harassing women more than the other way around. Sometimes it's men harassing men. But misogyny is, operates through sexual harassment, coercion, psychological techniques aimed at controlling women and by legally or socially excluding women from full citizenship or participation. In some cases, misogyny rewards women for accepting an inferior status. What? Misogyny will reward you for taking a second place or space. This is, this is almost scary. This has been the case in Judaism, Christianity, and Islamic cultures for centuries. Jewish, uh, Christian, and Islamic. Misogyny can be understood both as an attitude held by individuals, primarily men, and as widespread cultural custom or systems, including Catholicism, where the Virgin Mary is considered Holy Mother and a sacred person and personification. At least with the Catholic Church around the Virgin Mary, there's respect. But remember, Catholic priests don't marry and Catholic nuns don't marry. The First Lady thing doesn't work in Catholicism. My wife was from a Catholic background. Her mother was very devout. She has a sister here, two sisters, very devout Catholics. One married to the Kojic church. Uh, 
So Jesus didn't have an appreciation for the first lady thing and didn't like the role. I'll just be honest with you. She played it well, beautiful, elegant, stately, stylish. That's what I wanted her to be. And I thought she was happier than she was. And she wasn't that happy playing that role. But she never developed the kind of uh, sacred reverence for it because the priests were called fathers with no children and no wives. How could they be fathers? Scripture actually says you're not supposed to call anybody father but God. New Testament. So anyway, much of this attitude is slowly diminishing, but far too slowly, thank God, that it's changing. The only reason Donald Trump, the most disrespectful, narcissistic, un undignified, and anti-Semitic, racist, misogynist, is still contaminating the Republican Party or keeping our democracy as less stable than it's been since the Civil War, is his mostly white, ultra-conservative, evangelical Christian base. They're the ones that keep that man in place. He can, he, he can commit no sin. They will forgive him, absolutely. These are, for the most part, the same category of anti-abolitionist crowd that launched the Southern Baptist denomination. They were slave promoters or slavery promoters. He, Trump, is a sad and shameful example of what lives deeply in the heart and head of these so-called followers of Jesus who have mostly lost their direction or the purpose for being. The church is, is lost. Uh, most sensible, sane, sober people are embarrassed by this Trump, uncouth, cocky, careless, unscientific, unspiritual, non-intellectual uh, and integrity lacking leadership of Trump. His profound lack of character. Sober people say this guy's a, he's a thug. Today, his company, the Trump companies were indicted on 17 counts of criminal accounts, criminal indictments of a, a whole list of things, follow the news. He's not directly indicted, but he will be. They're building this case against him so solidly. Who are these extreme fundamentalists though? These religious bigots that they don't see or sense the error of their way. The more religious Trump's followers are, the more extreme they are. The less religious are beginning to move away from his twisted model. He says things that he knows his base followers the cruelest things they like, the most insulting comments about anybody he doesn't like, male, female, black, white, gay, straight, bi, it doesn't matter. If he doesn't like you, he's going to denounce you verbally. And he says things that evidently live deep in the hearts of these pious, pompous hypocrites who call themselves Christians, not all of them, of course, but many of them are racist, bigot, misogynist, homophobic, Troublemakers, they picked a fight with the entire 21st century. They don't want growth. They won't have it. They're resenting and resisting it. And they're not finished. They're well endowed with, uh, well uh, equipped with, with uh, armor. There's over 400 million guns out there that we know of. Many of them are assault weapons that can kill many, many people. Plus they have grenades. They've got swords and knives and there's a lot. We're so close to a major infraction of our culture. And some of it was ha is happening. The, the uh, power plant that was uh, 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 disempowered and vandalized in North Carolina, there's 55,000 of those. And uh, there will be copycatters because the news carried the story. So I, in the next week or two, it'll happen again. If they, they could go after those things and shut this country down, somebody could let a firecracker go off at an airport, at two airports, or, um, or call in a threat, bomb, and shut the airlines down and travel in this country down. We've never felt so vulnerable and so volatile in our history. And that's because correction is occurring. And uh, again, I've said about the Trump thing and I'll stop. He was raised up to expose what ultimately needs to be expelled from our culture. Religion is imploding. Religion will ultimately explode. Uh, it's going to get rough, the writing over the next couple of years. Uh, the belligerence is going to be intensified. People are going to be blindly angry and blind with anger. And they are not going to care who they hurt or hate, 
or kill or injure or wound or disable. We've never seen it like this. It's like Trump has given permission for hatred to be popular and acceptable. The thing that bothers me the most is the church hasn't fixed it. The church is behind all of it. The church is helping to create it and to sustain it and to endorse it and to approve it. Push it. There are Christian preachers using their pulpits to denounce Democrats and to threaten their members with anything slightly really close to progressive progression or what they call liberalism or socialism for that matter. They're paranoid. You know why? Because they know their days are numbered. They know the handwriting is on the wall. They know their time is just about out. But they're going to go down fighting. I'm just telling you that you're going to have a lot of um, um, natural disasters, possibly more severe earthquakes and repetitive earthquakes. The volcanoes are erupting. I've been telling you that. Hawaii, it's one in Indonesia, an earthquake in Indonesia, along the fire line, the, the San Andreas Fault. Something could happen in California. Something did two weeks ago, a five point something uh, degree um, earthquake. I just sense the earth is quaking, that nature is revolting. Uh, from the melting of the glaciers and the raising of the tides, then multi-million dollar structures and apartments and condos and chateaus and beautiful homes along the water are falling into the sea because the shorelines and the, the storms are more violent. The hurricane seasons will be more violent. The water is warmer. Uh, El Nino, El Nina, global warming, you doofuses folks that don't want to accept it. This is global warming. And it's very destructive. And it could take us out or under if we continue the way we are. Little children are telling us. So anyway, listen, think, go over this. Women listening and watching, I apologize for things we've said and done over the years. Uh, personally and corporately or collectively, we've been unkind and insensitive in so many ways. And I'm embarrassed about a lot of that as you know, and I want to see change. I anticipate change. I expect change. I believe change is uh, in, the, in the works for all of us and that there's something so very powerful and pleasant that's going to happen and that you're going to love and feel and know. Um, it's going to be, uh, I think, probably unprecedented and precedented in so many ways. Here comes my mom as I close. What you need, sweetheart? Check it for the lights before you go in. Okay, I'll make sure that they're all for on. I'm down there. I didn't want to check. Okay. My mom doesn't understand that we turn the lights on because it's Christmas time and that we have porch lights and stuff out in the yard. She don't like it. Every night I go through this. She wants to change it. Uh, and that's okay. You know, that's almost what she wants. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I got two. I got two streamers. Did you fix it? I don't know what that is. Sorry. That's gone, right? I'm not sure what you're doing. I have two on. I didn't mean I couldn't find one. So I have two. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I don't know what I did. Hang on here. Just one second. Go away. Go away. No. Okay. I, I think we fixed it. I'm not sure what you did. I couldn't find. I put another one on because I couldn't find you, you and where we are. Well, I'm sorry. That was me. And of course, mom came and told me to turn the lights up. Turn out the light. 
Do it if I like. <laughs> I have a feeling Mama's going to come in tonight because she's real feisty and she's asking questions and she keeps seeing people in the house and the little girl is there and I got to feed that person and they're knocking on the door and little things like that. They call it the dementia. And then sometimes she comes out of it and she's just a sober. She can put the TV on the station. She can change it. And I don't know. And then sometimes she gets the, the remote mixed up with the phone. But that's my mom. You know, that's my mother. And so I'm going to take care of her and work with her. She taught me how to write a check. She taught me how to wash my clothes and, and told me that to start using my middle name when I came to college. She's spoken in my life along the way, been there for me. And so um, I'm glad I've got her these 93 years. I don't know how many more years or months, maybe weeks that I'll have her. But as long as I've got her, she's precious to me. Do we have any of the Chris Christmas music to put up, Malachi, before we close? Yes, we can play. I, I do have a song here. Monica, my daughter, Majesty, has recorded, I think, four Christmas songs that we're going to make available to you for your Here's one of them. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Oh yeah, have yourself a merry little Christmas. For all of you, precious friends.
Wow. Thank you for your kind comments. Isn't that a beautiful song, a beautiful voice? That's my baby girl. Thank you, Marie, Gertrude. I'm glad y'all are loving this. You can download that song. I think there are three others uh, on there. Right, Malachi? Free of charge. Just yes. Download it's it. On, it's on uh, SoundCloud, but I said put a link in the chat. It'll be you on my SoundCloud site. And look up her name. Say that again. SoundCloud. They can go to SoundCloud and actually look up her name on there also, but I put a link in the chat so they can see it. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's some wonderful music and it's all smooth and classy. I sent that to Stevie. He said, man, he picked me up the phone and called me back. Uh, he actually FaceTimed me. Now, what boy? But anyway, he said, if I was younger, I'd marry your daughter just to hear her voice. You know, just being complimentary. Um, but I let him hear her seven. He loves it. He may produce a song for her. He says he wants me and her to sing on one of his. I love Stevie so much. He's such a, we've been friends for well over 20 years now. And uh, Tojik background as well. All right, we need to go. Thank you for your time. I went three minutes over, but I started three or four minutes late. But I love you. I thank you for your time. All of you on uh, Facebook, Rosalind and Shalandra and Nicole. I'm seeing these names. James Adam, you're always here. Thank you. And Donald Robinson. Sister who? Carissa, Denise, Lisa, Sharon. Uh, by the way, don't forget to support, send whatever donation you want. Uh, we like to call them seeds, but that's what I learned. That you, that you flow into a ministry or a church or a minister that ministers to you. A lot of you women should have been, my, my cash app should have been going crazy just with women. Because when, when, you know, women can hide money that God can't even find. Y'all got us. <laughs> and you're generous when you give and thank you. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you again next Tuesday. I have to go to New York this weekend. Uh, be with Bishop Jordan on Sunday. Majesty is actually singing. Uh, she's doing her first acting role off Broadway on Friday night. I mean, Saturday night. So I'm going up on Friday. Uh, you know, to support her. And uh, I like her acting. She's a very good actress. Not quite the same as she is a singer, but she hasn't acted as much. But um, anyway, thank you, Aruth. And thank you, Shalanda and Destiny and Grace Jones. God bless you all. Have a wonderful evening, my precious. Uh, 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 there's the first gift. Thank you. Somebody sent a thank you so much for that. Uh, cash app, dollar sign, New Dimensions 2. It will be a blessing to us. Thank you so much. We are now trying to move. And I've spent a lot of money just on one widow. I, I, Sarah Jordan Powell, I keep her house uh, with security. I also, um, I'm helping her move. I paid close to $2,500 just to have the house clean the other day. But that comes out of my new dimensions, Benevolence Fund. Uh, that's not money for me, that, but I do feed hungry people and I've given thousands through that fund. We help a lot of people, especially widows or orphans, very benevolent causes, various benevolent causes around the country. So please know when you help New Dimensions, you're helping people, especially widows and orphans as they are in their affliction. And while I keep myself unspotted from whatever the world is for description. All right, peace and blessing. There's all this music, go get it, go listen to it, download it, play it in your house. She's working on a full album that may be ready, but then she has a jazz album coming right after that. It was just made me cry when I heard those songs. That's what um, I like. I guess Herschel didn't win. He did win? No. He didn't win. Right. Oh boy, you scared me. Roanoke won. I I know I know uh, Ralph. I met him when he first took the church in Atlanta. Came over and introduced himself to me. Wonderful young man. I didn't expect him to lose, but I guess it's 1030 in, in the East Coast. Did y'all hear that? Ralph Warnock. Yes. 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 All right. I love you. Good night. I can rest on that. I'll go turn the news on.